If you're like me and you first learnt web design and UI design in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or any of those Adobe products, you're probably a bit confused when you move to Figma what are components and why you should use them and kind of how do they work. You'll find as your projects get bigger and they scale more, you'll notice you're copying things across a lot. So every time you make a repeatable element like a card or a button, you're having to drag it over. So as you get more and more pages, you are dragging a lot of things across and you're just doing a lot of manual things. And if you're anything like me, you'll go back in your projects and you'll keep wanting to update things and improve things, changing the color of things or maybe updating the shape of the buttons or making make the cards look a little bit different. And as you keep doing this, you'll start to notice that there'll be inconsistencies that creep in and also a lot of manual work that you're doing the same thing over and over again. This is where components come in. They'll make things much more efficient and save you time and give you more time back to do creative things instead of changing the padding on frame 425 from 32 pixels to 30 pixels and then back to 32 pixels again. So what are components? They're reusable design elements that can be used over and over again to create consistency and help with scaling. If you break down elements in your designs into small chunks, like buttons or nav bars or footers or radio buttons, any of these kind of things can be made into components and then you can reuse them over and over again. Why should you use components? I think the four big ones to get you started is consistency, efficiency, collaboration and scalability. If we go through each of them, consistency, as we said before, as you're going through more and more pages, you can know that elements are consistent throughout all your designs. Efficiency, build it once and then reuse it. It doesn't mean that it's locked like that forever. You can go back to the master component and edit it that way, but you can spend more time doing creative things instead of making radio buttons 400 times. So collaboration, as you start working with other people and they need to be in your Figma file as well, it's really easy to be able to be on the same page with people as you're both looking at the same components. And scalability, as your systems get bigger or you start taking on really big projects or even look at things like design systems, they scale much easier. So it saves you a lot of time being able to just reuse the same element and it builds out modularly instead of having to go into each little thing and keep copying things across. All right, we're in Figma now. So now let's go into practically how do you actually create components um, and explaining and understanding variants and those other properties. So we'll start off with a button. So T for type, right button, or click command A to apply auto layout. We'll apply padding to the sides and padding to the top. Also with auto layout, it helps it just make it responsive as well. Okay, so now we have the button. We wanna center that and I know I want this button to have some icons. So you can either do this after you make it a component or before. I just find it easier if you add it before. So I'm gonna add these icons. We know we're gonna want one that side and one the other side. Add some spacing here for it. Make that font a little bit bigger. So now, so now that we have the basis of the button, we'll just apply a fill so we can see it. Apply this purple, change that to white so we can see it. We'll come up and click this button up here. So create component, there's a shortcut as well. You can just click create component. So now the outline's changed from blue to purple, which means it's a component. Also another way to see is that if you click command Y, you can see that it's a purple outline and then click command Y to go back. So we'll just rename this button and then let's go through some of the, you can add properties in the side now. So we have variant, boolong, instant swap and text. So we'll go through all of these and then not as confusing as they seem, but just to understand how this is a component now. So if you search for assets, so we name this button. So if you search for button, you can drag this button in. And if you click on this one, this is an instance of it. So you'll have this icon up here, which will take you to the master one, the main component. And this is the main one. So this is how making changes can be really fast. So say you have all these different buttons, which are all instances, you go to the main component and then you decide you want to change it to rounded corners. 
So you change it to rounded corners and instantly it does all of them. So you don't have to manually go through and change them. You can just change one and it applies the effects to all of them. Let's go through and understand properties. So we'll start with text. So text, give it a value of button or whatever you want the text to be. Okay, so we have this thing here that is saying not used within component. So you need to select what that's actually applying to because it doesn't know at the moment. So if you click into the button, you come down to the text that says button and you come across to content, click this little button on the side here and select it to the property we just created, which is text. So we'll just make an instance so we can see what that looks like. So now in the instance, you can see you have these properties on the side. So now it's very easy if you have content editors coming in and they might not understand, it's easy for them to be able to edit within the side. So say they want to change this to download, it'll automatically change as you change it in there. Next, we'll go through Boolean. Boolean. Go through Boolean. So Boolean is yes, no kind of questions. So I find it best if it's an icon or if it's a show hide kind of feature. So we'll make this one show right icon. And it's true because currently the icon is getting shown. So let's create the property. And similar as before, it says it's not with used within this component. So you need to come to the layer you want to apply it to and select that one and then come across to layer and click show right icon. So now what that does to your instance, is now you have text and you have this little toggle for you to show right icon. So if you want it on, toggle it on, you want it off, toggle it off. And because it's auto layout, it automatically updates the sizing. So it's responsive. We'll just do the same for show left icon. Now we'll go into understanding instant swap. So we'll make instant swap, we'll make this icon and we'll select what we want. So we want it to be these icons that I've selected and a really good new feature as well, which makes it super easy if you have preferred values. This helps with consistency. If you do want certain icons to be used in buttons and certain ones not to be used, this helps with that. So if we click preferred value, you can auto select all these ones that you want to be within the icon and then create property. And same as before, it's not shown. So we know what to do now. Actually just make this right icon. We'll come in and we'll select right icon. Now you can show and hide the right icon and also you can instance swap it easily with you can select other icons within the whole design system but as we we're saying for consistency you can set up preferred ones so if you know that you want it to be these four for example it's very easily now accessible for someone to be able to come in and change the icons now the last property to talk about is variance so variance can be all sorts of things so variants are great for design systems if you're passing over to a developer and they want to understand all the different states or as you're scaling and you need to make variants of buttons as in you want to have medium ones and large ones and small ones you can create them all as variants and have it all within the same component so if we click variant we'll start off with a simple one of the state so this is a default state as you noticed see when you click create variant you got this purple box around it so that shows you all the variants that are within it. So we'll apply auto layout to that box. And then this little new add variant, we'll add a new one. So we'll make this one hover and we'll come in and change the color of it to darker. So now we have a default and a hover. Do one more. So we'll make a, a size one as well. So We'll come through and we'll add a new variant. So new variant, this one could be size and the default is default. And now this is a state default, but size we're gonna add a new start and we're gonna make it large. So for large, we'll 
increase the size to 24 and we'll increase the padding on the sides as well to 48 and 24 and we'll do the same as well for the hover state so that's a good thing is that if you see this error it's because we have two variants that are the same so these both are default and large so you'll get errors and you can just come here and say select conflicting variant and it will tell you which ones need to be changed or which ones you've added too many of so we'll change this one to hover and we'll change the color of it to the other one great plugin that i found is called propster so this is really helpful to visually show you all your types of variants within your component so you just come up here click propster and click run and it'll build you out a table and it will show you all the different variants that you have within your buttons or whatever your component is so these ones are all showing left icon which is true and right icon is true and then within here we have default and hover and we have default and large so it breaks it down and shows you all the possible outcomes. So this is great for design systems. If it's helpful for team members to see all the different versions. So now that we have set up these variants as well, this is really helpful for prototyping as well. So the basic one is setting up hover. So we'll select the default button. We'll come across the prototype and we'll bring down the connecting arrow to the hover while hovering and then we want it to change to the hover state and we'll set it as smart animator 400 milliseconds so now if we take that button and we apply it to a design come up here to prototype and we click the little present arrow in this prototype view we can show the hover so this is really helpful for clients if you're trying to explain how an interaction might work you can just set it up as a prototype. I hope you have a much better understanding of components now and how powerful they are and the importance they play in Figma. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. And if you like the video, give it a like or subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.